Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming Videos. My name is once again Hollow, and today we're talking about the Arena Quests, which are back in Master Rank thanks to Arlo here, who is maybe sick of me waving. Yes, with Arlo and his insatiable need to say yeah at the end of every sentence, he's bringing back the Arena Quests in Master Rank. As you can see, we have Arena Quests and Challenge Quests, but Challenge Quests remain only low and high rank. I imagine we'll get a Master Rank version of Challenge Quests soon, maybe in the next update, but for now, in the Arena Quests, we have the Master Rank tab and six specific arena hunts that you can overcome. Each one has unique rewards that you will need to get to then make a hey, two new armor sets. With that said then, let's explain everything, such as the arena quests in general. To begin with, like I said, you can speak with Arlo to begin your new arena quest or just like original Rise, you can come to Utsuchi back in Kimura and you can still do them from here as well. Now, as usual, when you pick yourself an arena quest, you're going to find that it's not a normal hunt. As we choose to depart on the quest, we're suddenly brought to this new confusing screen if you've never seen this before. You have a choice between five equipment sets with five weapons that are preset and you know, you cannot change at all. You must use these. So in the case of me, who is a dual blades main, I don't have dual blades as an option for this quest. So I'm going to have to use something else. And that's something you're going to want to be aware of. These are presets though as well. So even even if I did play Gunlance as my main or I was comfortable with it, this is not a set that I'm going to be able to choose or adjust in any way. So it's going to have a preset of scrolls and loadout that you really can't manipulate. Part of the challenge is your very limited items as well. You can have 10 mega potions and rations and that's all you're going to get. You can get some extra rations and heals though by wyvern riding monsters and having them break parts and drop the extra materials. But it's far and few between. You're quite limited. As per usual, eating before an arena quest is isn't going to benefit you in any way because you're like hard reset and you're putting to a different loadout in a different situation, almost like a different character as you go in. Now, as you can see on each of these quests, they have a rank and a grade next to it with a timer associated with it. As you can see, S grade is the highest rank, A is the second and B being the worst. And they also have different timers based on which monster you're actually after, meaning the harder the monster, the more time you have to still reach the S grade. It's a nice additional extra challenge, but this is certainly challenging when you consider the fact that you cannot cart. When you cart, you fail the quest and that's it. Now with the fact that the failure conditions are faint once and you fail the quest, you cannot cart. Well, that makes for, hey, potentially a new fastest way to progress time. You might want to progress time for a multiple of reasons. Whether you're progressing time for talisman builds or the Argozi for farming materials, or maybe you're trying to re-roll an expedition to get a different upsurge. Previously, what you would do is you would go to high rank arena and then pick the Rajang hunt and die in roughly 23 to 25 seconds. Now let's try the master rank version and see if we can't do it faster. In that case, you would pick the gunner option because they have the lowest health and Rajang would hit you twice and that will cart you. Let's see if we can be faster than that. So without touching the spirit bird there, which will give us full health and full stamina, let's get in front of furious Rajang and see if he can't kill us in either one hit or two hits, but quicker. Come on, Rajang, you can do it. Kill me. Yes. All right. Wow. One single hit compared to two hits, that's got to be faster than 25 seconds. It's 14, okay, basically 15 seconds. So yes, this is very clearly the new best and optimal way to progress time, which should come in handy for loads of different reasons. Now, each hunt has different special rewards. These are the various coins you'll need to craft the armor sets involved. I mentioned earlier, uh, we have the specific monster coins, which we'll get by killing each and every monster. So say Luna Garon here, if you need Luna Garon coins, you need to hunt Luna Garon. But there's also universal coins in the form of silver and gold. Silver comes from the first three arenas, one, two, and three, while gold comes from the second half, uh, four, five, and six. The actual names of these silver and gold coins are for silver, rager coins, and for gold, it's the hero king coins. These are tied to unlocking the new Master Rank Arena armor sets of which there are two. This being one of them, Brigade X, which you might think, hang on a minute, that looks really familiar. Well, of course it is to old Monster Hunter players, but in Master Rank, there's another set that looks super similar, the Guild Bard, which we talked about in another video. Look how similar these two sets are. They're almost identical, just a bit different on the shoulders and of course the hat. And in general, the Brigade has a more armored look to it and I quite like it. Either way, this set has quite a plethora 
plethora of skills on it. I mean, look at the amount of them. Botanist level 4, Divine Blessing 3, Capture Master, Geologist, Marathon Runner, Spirit Bird's Call, Good Luck, and Carving Pro. These are actually not bad at all. The chess piece has Capture Master on it, which means that you have a really high chance of better rewards when you capture a monster. That's going to be great if you're farming out a monster's materials. The gloves have Spirit Bird's Call, which is that new uh, skill in, in Sunbreak that has the Spirit Bird spawning on you throughout a hunt. That's really good for generating the maximum temporary buffs. It's not a bad skill at all, especially in a first playthrough. The waist comes with two good luck on it, which is always nice. Again, increased rewards. This set really is helpful for farming, I'd say. While the other pieces have random things to them, you could say that they might make for a good gathering set. But honestly, I still believe the leather set is the way to go for that because it has full geologist and full botanist that are easier to get. Still, there's some really nice pieces to Brigade X here. I'm definitely a fan of that set. As you can see, though, from the forging materials needed, you can see those coins I was speaking of. We have the specific monster coins needed and then the silver rager coins as the universal coin all of them are going to need. And we'll need monster slug bones, which are easy to get throughout just picking up bones in Master Rank. The other set that we can get from Master Rank Arena, though, is, of course, the Guild Palace. This armored set looks quite nice, quite regal, definitely very fancy, definitely a palace knight. It comes with Agitator, Offensive Guard, Heroics, Coalescence, and Wall Runner Boost, making this set a little bit more out there, I would say. These skills, though some of them are great, like Agitator, come at sort of awkward levels that I'm not really convinced. Perhaps one of the better pieces is the chest piece, thanks to level 2 Agitator and a bit of Heroics. Or the gloves, which has 2 Agitator, and then you have the Wall Runner Boost, as well as Coalescence, if you're thinking about trying that build. Overall, though, I find Guild Palace a bit of a weird set in terms of its skills, but a nice layered set that's definitely worth unlocking if you're into this kind of regal knight style. As you can see, though, the universal coin, as I mentioned, is the Hero King coin or the Gold coin. And then we have the monster coins tied to whichever monster you need to hunt to get those. However, we're going to need large Elder Dragon bones to get those, which is going to require some Elder Dragon hunting, of course. But there you have it. That's my quick overview of Master Rank Arena and the changes that we have with that. It's nice to have two armor sets rather than just, say, the one that's slightly better in higher rank compared to low rank. And I do think that Brigade X is not a bad set in general for the skills that it has on it that will be useful for farming. Still, they both have really nice looks, so they both have high value in terms of layered and worth unlocking, I'd say. Not to mention, arena quests in general, they're quite fun challenges. Forcing you to try some other weapons than maybe the one you like to main, or at the very least putting you into different situations with different builds and the different weapons and armor that you might not normally see. For now though, that's it from me and Arlo here. So, thank you very much for watching. If the video has helped you, do please drop a like so we can keep making content like this on the channel. Otherwise, I've been Hollow, he's been Arlo, you've been you, and we'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice, to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage, is, uh, goodbye.